Hello everybody and welcome back aboard to the channel. My name is Tom and I am the founder of Real Top Football. I am going to bring you a prediction video today then folks. The Premier League Game Week 2 predictions video for, well, Premier League Game Week 2 predictions. My predictions on Premier League Game Week 2. Um, before we do that, I'm just going to take a quick look and see how many points I got last week from my predictions so uh, i'll find that for you right now um i'll find that for you right now so there you go so as you can see burnley versus manchester city i predicted 1-1 i got zero points uh, obviously i'm in the uh, predictions league uh, so i'm going going off this uh, arsenal 5 forest nil i got two points in my league for that one um i it finished 2-1 uh, the Burnley Man City game finished 3 0. Uh, Bournemouth uh, would be uh, actually drew 1 1 with West Ham. I predicted a 2 1 Bournemouth win. Um, I did get one right. That was Brighton who beat Luton Town by four goals to one. Uh, so I got all maximum points in my league for that one. Uh, Everton won. Fulham won. I got that one wrong. I said hey, Fulham won 1 0. Uh, same for Sheffield United Crystal Palace. Uh, Palace won. 1-0. Uh, I predicted a 2-0 Sheffield United win. I predicted Newcastle 4 Villa nil. I predicted the um, uh, margin of scoreline correct. Uh, it finished 5-1, so Newcastle didn't uh, keep a clean sheet, but battered Villa, who are rock bottom going into this weekend. Uh, Brentford 3 Spurs 1, that finished 2-2. Uh, Chelsea won Liverpool nil. That finished a draw, and I got Manchester United Wolves wrong. Wolves dominated, and it actually finished one nil to Manchester United. But Wolves should have got them out of that game. They were the better side, and um, most certainly should have had a penalty. So that's the roundup of what happened last week. But this week it's game week two, and I'm about to bring them to you. But first, don't forget to join our fancy Premier League with the code S2R8AC. And also, don't forget to become a member using the link in the description below. And of course, just a reminder that Luton Town versus Burnley is a postponed fixture for this weekend. So that game is postponed. So we're starting off then with Nottingham Forest, who are taking on Sheffield United. Let's have it, folks. So. I thought carefully about this. I thought Sheffield United, they're new to the league. Well, they're not new, but they've not been in it for a while since they got relegated. I feel as though Forrest, with home advantage, and just a bit more experience, you know, they look a bit fresh. I think that Forrest will comfortably beat Sheffield United. I'm not writing the blades off here, but I don't see Sheffield United being able to cope. You know, at the moment, Forrest are in a good spell. And I feel as though that Forrest should easily win this game against Sheffield United. You know, they should have beat Palace, really, the way they played. They didn't. Sheffield United, away from home, I think will be that good. And we all know that Forrest are quite dominant at home. So for that reason, I've gone with a 2-0 Forrest win. Nothing against Sheffield United. I just feel that Forrest will have more power my more confidence in this game. So, yeah, Nottingham Forest 2, Sheffield United nil is my prediction for this one. Let's move on then to Fulham, who take on Brentford at Craven Cottage. Now, once again, the one of those I have to think carefully about. You think Brentford win, but oh no, maybe Fulham could win this one. You don't know sometimes. Both of these two teams showed a lot of confidence last season and were both bright. Brentford are obviously even brighter, you know, and I feel as though Brentford are stronger. The only thing that worries me about Brentford is sometimes they lost, they got bad results against the smaller sides, um, which is something you see with some teams where against the small sides they really struggle, but against the big sides they thrive. Now, I'm, I don't think it's a case of Brentford are going to struggle. I just feel as though Fulham, I don't mean they're going to be sat down on their arses that easily by Brentford at home. In this, you know, I just don't think Fulham will, will let that happen. And of course, the, you know, after a positive result at Goodison Park, Fulham will be in good spirits. Brentford, um, what did Brentford do? 
Uh, oh, Brentford drew, Fulham won. That's the difference. But but I think Brentford will will, will, will go two 0 up in the game. I reckon Fulham will uh, have to dig in, find two goals to equalise. I just don't see either team winning. I think it will be a goal fest of a, a draw, and I think it'll be two two. So Liverpool versus AFC Bournemouth now. Liverpool at uh, the uh, Vitality Stadium were beaten 1 0 by AFC Bournemouth. I believe it was Philip Billing with the goal that made the difference there. A really poor defeat. And I did not think the Liverpool showed me much in the, um, in the game against Chelsea. They didn't show me much. First half, first 30 odd minutes, they were they were all right. You know, she had a disallowed goal from Salah, you know, did well. But for me, Liverpool aren't at it. And Liverpool look the same. They've lost key players, such as Jordan Henderson. I wouldn't class that as a big loss, but Liverpool fans would, because we all know what Liverpool fans are like. They've lost the likes for me, you know. And they just don't have money to replace the players. You know, John Henry, otherwise known as FSG, who at the moment are, well, the Liverpool fans are protesting more about FSG at the moment than um, Manchester United are about the Glazers. That shows you how bad of a situation that Liverpool Football Club are in right now. Now, against Bournemouth, they were 9-0 at home last season. So I wouldn't really want to write Liverpool off. I don't think that it will be as high as 9-0 or even 5-0. However, I do think that Liverpool, you know, because of that result last season and because Anfield is a difficult place for a team such as Bournemouth to go, you know, and uh, obviously Bournemouth haven't got Gary O'Neill anymore, I've gone with a 3 0 at Liverpool win. Obviously, I think Liverpool will, will, will win it comfortably. I just don't think it will be as comfortable and as easy as the 9-0 last season. So for that reason, Liverpool 3, AFC Bournemouth 0. Moving on then to Wolves, who take on Brighton. Now, I was very impressed with Wolves' um, start to the season at Old Trafford. I thought they were absolutely blooming tremendous in that game. They should have won it. Unfortunately, Rafael Varane's goal. I, I tell you, they, they, even after the goal, they, ste- they kept going. They were really, they looked really fresh in that game, Wolves. They were so bright attackingly, which I've not seen from Wolves in years. You know, that they were on the front foot, bringing the ball forward a lot. United did not play well in that game. They did not deserve the win. Rafael Varane with the goal, which, which I thought Wolves were going were, were to fall away then, but they didn't. They kept going. In fact, they got better after that goal went in. They kept going, hammering on that door. Pounding, you know what I mean? Absolutely pounding on that door. And I feel as though Wolves should have won that game or at least got a point. In fact, they should have got a point because at the end of the game, when they were pounding on that door, they were absolutely pounding. They were pounding on that door and they had two penalty appeals, one of which was definitely a penalty. Not sure about the other one. The what Bernana comes out of his goal and absolutely wax all the Wolves players to the floor. I think it was either Neto or Cunha. But either way, wax into the claw. Bang! Straight on there. He come, jumps. Whack. He doesn't get any of the ball. Just gets the body, the player. And absolutely sends him crashing to the floor. It's definitely a penalty, 100%. And I am, I tell you, I called it a failure from VAR. And it was a failure from VAR. Because how on earth... Can A, the referee not give the penalty on field without VAR? He wouldn't have needed VAR if he'd have just given the penalty. But oh no, goes to his VAR, mate. His VAR has a good look at it and then decides check complete. Check complete. Anana's slammed him to the floor, has got none of the ball. It's 100%. I tell you, he comes out flying. How is that not a penalty for AR? How on earth are you not sending Simon Hooper to the to the monitor? And rightly so, have PGOML apologised to Wolverhampton Wanderers and also uh, left Simon Hooper and um, Jared, uh, I think, it, uh, I don't know who it was in VAR, I think it was Jared Gillett, whoever it was, both of those two uh, referees, officials, have been left out for this game week. But that was disgraceful from VAR 
and the referee. Now, I quite rate Simon Hooper. He handled the Manchester derby, yeah? He took the raise of Manchester derby. He did superbly. He impressed me. But, yes, on Monday, that was just terrible. That one decision with VAR and Simon Hooper combined was a shambles. Uh, so, yeah, based on Wolves' confidence start, I think they'll play well against Brighton, but it's Brighton, and I think that Brighton are in good spirits, had a really, really good win against um, uh, Luton Town, and I just don't think Wolves will be able to cope. I think Wolves will play well, but once they concede the first goal, Brighton will uh, go strength to strength, and I reckon it'll be a 2-0 win for Brighton. Obviously, you know, Jao Pedro's looking bright, and uh, Gross is absolutely on fire at the moment for Brighton. I'll tell you what, Gross, he's top. So, look, as much as, much as Wolves started well, and I do think they'll play well, Wolves nil, Brighton two. Moving on then to the big game of the week, the big six clash. Tottenham Hotspur taking on Manchester United. One rivalry which in the past season or so, Manchester United dominated. But Manchester United, based on that uh, start, they just looked laboured. They did not look ready. They did not look like they were playing well. They really weren't at the races that day, United. And they got lucky to win that game. Spurs looked at the races against Brentford for me. And I think that's the difference between these two sides. Spurs started very, very well. You know, no Harry Kane, but Christian Romero opens the score early on and they played well. They were working as a team. They gave Brentford a game. And I feel as though, you know, with that confidence, you know, and obviously Spurs anyway start the season well, they're beating Manchester United. And look, as much as I've said, Manchester United win the league, you know, the, and it, and the, this is the rivalry between my two most hated clubs. I think, you know, that, that that Spurs will win this because United did not start well against Wolves. And that's concerning for me that they didn't play well against Wolves at all. They did not put on a show. They were at the theatre of dreams. They did not put on a show. So how are they going to put on a show at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, which is a stadium where Manchester City have never even scored a single goal? To go to that stadium, it can be easy, but at the same time, you have to be at your best. It can be easy if you play at your best. And top Man United did not play at their best against um, against right uh, Wolves. And that's the difference for me. I reckon that Spurs will come up with a goal from somewhere. I don't know where Romero, whoever you can think of. I'm going to go for a Spurs win though. Tottenham Hotspur won. Manchester United nil. People will moan at me. People say it's debatable, but United did not play well against Wolves. And uh, I felt as though Spurs played to their full capacity against Brentford. So for that reason, Spurs won, Man United nil. Moving on then to Manchester City versus Newcastle United. Eight o'clock kickoff tomorrow night. Uh, big game once again between two big sides. City won the league for the third time in a row. Um, and um, Newcastle obviously come up qualifying for the Champions League this season. Newcastle were very positive. They did lose at the Etihad last season, but it's the start of the season. They're looking fresh, battered Villa, you know, a high spirit. And I think Newcastle will give City a game. Now, a part of me says City will win, but the majority of me says Newcastle will win. And I do think that Newcastle will win based on the fact that Kevin De Bruyne is out four months max for City. However, I just don't think City will, you know, I do think it, but I can't be sure of it, you know. And when you're not sure... It's never best to take a risk, you know, because me going out here on public to say, well, Newcastle are going to beat Man City at, her, at, at the Etihad and they don't do it, that's going to make me look like a fool. So I do think Newcastle will go 2-1 up, but I reckon they'll keep the game like that for a while. However, I think that City, just because you know it's City, and Pep Guardiola will dig out a equaliser from somewhere, a late equaliser 
dramatic late equaliser from whoever you can think of, Haaland, Bernardo, whoever. I don't think City will let themselves lose, but I do think the Newcastle will uh, give them a really tough game. So for that reason, City 2, Newcastle 2. I wanted to say 2-1 Newcastle, but you just can't take risks sometimes. So there you go. Moving on then to Villa, who take on Everton. Villa were after obviously bottom of the league after that 5-1 defeat to uh, uh, Newcastle. They've got ground to make up. However, I don't think that Everton are at, actually played badly against Fulham. I thought Everton played well. They had disallowed goal, obviously. I thought they were unlucky to lose that game against Fulham. Fulham, obviously, you know, once they scored the goal, really up the momentum, you know, up, off we go. You know, they, they were going to get that win. You know, they were going for it, but Everton played well. They just could not, they had this allowed goal. And since then, they just could not find, you know, a, a, resp- a goal to respond to that disallowed goal to try and, you know, give Fulham a game to try and win the game or at least try and get a draw. And Everton did come close to get an equaliser, but just couldn't do it against that Fulham side. This case, though, Villa are absolutely, I'm sure, weeping after that 5-1 defeat. I am sure they are shook, upset, every bad emotion. You know, how confident are they going to be feeling about, about that game against Everton? Not very. Anywhere for Prince of Villa to be relegated, but that, but today's prediction for, for that game is not based on that. My prediction for this game is based on the fact that Villa are, will be absolutely weeping after that Newcastle defeat. And I feel as though Everton played a lot better th- than they did against Newcastle. And I also feel as though Everton will go into the game with a lot of confidence. You know, I just don't think that, you know, Villa are, are ready for the challenge. So I feel as though it's going to finish Villa 1, Neil Everton 1. West Ham then taking on Chelsea now. I feel as though West Ham once again started the season well, played well against Bournemouth. I should have. I watched the game. Should have been streaming it, but Streamyard was playing. Uh, it was uh, not play. Not not um, not doing too well. Uh, I I think that West Ham start, played that game well though. I thought they had a good game, positive. Jared Bowen on the score sheet, good game. You know, no rice, no problem, it seemed, for them. And Chelsea as well. Now, Chelsea played way better than Liverpool in that game again, in that draw on Sunday. I just feel as though this fixture here at the London Stadium has history of West Ham getting points. I don't think history is going to change just like that. With West Ham's first home game of the season, and I think they'll go into it with a lot of confidence. And I feel as though that they are going to go one nil up against Chelsea, and Chelsea will dig out an equaliser. So, in this London derby at the Hat London Stadium, West Ham one, Chelsea one. Final uh, game of the game week: Crystal Palace versus Arsenal. Now, obviously, we. Uh, Two seasons ago, well, not not last season, but the season before, suffered a, a three 0 defeat. But at the start of last season, very very convincing two 0 win, you know, and it was a very very strong season for us last season. And I don't think that anything like that three 0 defeat will happen again to us at Selhurst Park. I think we learn from that. You know, we don't like playing Monday nights, but I feel as though the team will go out there, confidence, first away game of the season, brand new shirt, you know, I feel as though we should be winning. You know, I feel as though we should be winning against Crystal Palace here. So, look, it, it'll be. I think it'll be a tough test. Selhurst Park, believe me, is not an easy place for anybody to go, especially the Arsenal. But I feel as though uh, it'll be another 2-0 win for us. Sellers Park. So Crystal Palace nil, Arsenal two. So, uh, give me your thoughts on those predictions. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, all that's left to say to me, from all that's left to say from me, and who have we got here? Hey, look who I've got. This little fella. Yeah. Look, look. Yeah. 
all there's left to say from me and this little fella is bye 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 <laughs> see you later folks bye bye <laughs>